Welcome to my new video. I'm happy that you're here with me. Um, this is part four or the second part of the consonants and here you also find the link of the other videos and the link to my blog. We start right away with a complicated concept um, and this is it's about the CH sound and there we have two or even three different ways of pronouncing it. So first, the first, uh, the most important pronunciation, the difference between sh and ch. Um, I did it a bit strongly maybe, but I will try to show you. So the first one is after these vowels, e, i, e, u, and it's called the ich sound. So actually why we have the two two different sounds it's because it's much more logic for our whole mouth to pronounce it a bit more soft so i will show it um here so here's your tongue i will show it on the picture so it's kind of easy to uh see the sh sound is your tongue and your tongue goes um, up and the air is coming up here. <sighs> Let's try this together. Ich, Milch, München. Okay, and now we have a look at the next part to see the difference. It's ch and it's called the ach sound because we have it after the vowels a, o, u. And let's see your tongue. It's really at the back. And um, the air goes here. Ach. So um, you have to feel the difference of your tongue if the sound is difficult for you. Of course, depending on your mother language or on other languages you have learned, it might be quite easy. Um, okay, let's have a look at the examples. Nacht, Buch, auch, noch. Let's read it all together and please repeat after me. Ich... Milch, München, Nacht, Buch, auch, noch. Okay, and the last one is easy. Um, it's pronounced K, K. If you have um, CHS um, or we pronounce it ka at the beginning of some words. But here, um, depending on the dialect, some people might, might pronounce it um, differently. Let's have a look at the examples. Sex, fuchs, kor, kina. And here, for especially kina, some might pronounce it china. So don't worry if you hear something else. Important it is the sex and the fuchs. So this was a this muscle it actually is. We have some sounds to go. The sh sound, so S C H is actually just one sound and it's sh. It's unvoiced, so it's not zh. Hear the difference between sh and zh. Okay, let's read the examples. Schön, English, Schweiz. Once again. Schön, English, Schweiz. And then we have 
S T and S P and here we re actually just have an S C H P or S C H T but because it would be a bit long to actually write it, it's really pronounced sp or st. And let's have a look at the examples. Sprechen, spät, Stunde. Once again, and please speak with me. Sprechen, spät, Stunde. So, now we have the R or R. There are really different ways to pronounce it and you have to figure out one that is fine for you. Um, what might be possible is the English R, but if you can manage to do another R or R, it's fine. Um, the reason why we have different R's is again the different dialects, so, de so it depends on the region you are. Okay, let's have a look. Um, we have the uh, rolled r. Um, this is at the tip of your tongue, um, and the it the tongue vibrates. It's for some people it's really complicated, but try it. It's r, and you know that you do it correctly when you can really do it longer. You can. Um, as long as you have breath, you actually can pronounce it. Um, okay, then there is another one. I call it the French um, R because this is what the French um, have. And it's like a R. It's at the very back of your tongue and the front lies flat. R. And if these two rs are too difficult for you, you can remember our kh sound, the one we just had before, and you can voice it. And if you have like the r with the voice, it's also a r. That is fine. So you choose, you try, and please be patient. It's not that you can learn it from one. Yeah, from one second to the other. It takes time, so go in front of a mirror, try to listen, try to control yourself. And again, your tongue is a muscle and you have to exercise a lot. You have to really be patient and give you time. So let's read and you choose the R or R or R, whatever you like. So, Ratte, richtig. Correct. Um, so you probably have noticed I use this one because this is more or less the standard German, but in the South, for example, you really have the R sound. Okay. This has been, I think, Castle, you're nearly done. But we still have one thing that is very, very important regarding the and you remember, we already had this in the videos, R can be also vowel. Um, and here we have the um, rules when it's a vowel. And this is very important to notice because a lot of German speakers still pronounce it as a, as a consonant, even after years of speaking German. So after a long vowel, um, it's a consonant. Uh, when it's at the end. So let's read together. Vier, ihr, der, ohr. And here try to listen what I'm saying and not to read. It's a small ö uh sound. So once again. Vier, ihr, der, ohr. So here, please have faith and really pronounce it this way. Although you read an R, it's really important that you don't pronounce it. It's a huge step in your pronunciation. So the same goes with the ending ER. It's kind of dropped. You know, Germans are lazy. 
and here you just don't want to pronounce it. And it's hard to pronounce an R at the end. So, Lehrer, aber, besser, computer. Once again, Lehrer, aber, besser, computer. So I advise you at the beginning when you're reading a text, um, take a pencil and cross out the R's you don't pronounce and then read it again and really get used to it because it's hard at the beginning. So and then uh, the same goes with prefixes, R, C, R, F, R, um, because they're kind of, you have the feeling that kind of a part of the word ends after the prefix and this is why you don't. Um, pronounce it. Erklären, zerstören, verstehen. And here you also had this one. It's, um, I didn't write it here. I'm sorry for that, but you could drop it here as well because we have the ending en. Okay, once again. Erklären, zerstören, Verstehen or erklären, zerstören, verstehen. So this one is the important part and here you could drop it because it's a verb and you have the ending en and you don't need to pronounce it here. So if you have any questions, please below the reply to help. We're nearly done. And again, depending on your mother language, this is very easy, the L, um, but it's not really an English O. Oh. Um, your tongue is relaxed. Um, and if you want to find the right position of your tongue, uh, pronounce a N and then hold your nose. At that, it's N. You can't pronounce a N with when your nose is closed, then it's uh, there has to be air that comes by. And then you have the l. Uh, and the examples hallo, lustig, lachen. Oh, I've made a huge step. We are nearly done. And once again, I want to say thank you for all your support, for your feedbacks, for your comments. Um, it really helps me also when you point out mistakes, because of course I do mistakes. And yeah, I want to do it the way you can really learn. Thank you and tschüss!